Hi, I'm Charlie with 45 North, and today I'm here to walk you through the process of studying a tire. Things that you'll need, a studying tool, a pack of studs. Uh, these come in a number of different uh, counts to, to help you get as many studs as you need for your tire. I have a little bit larger supply here. Some isopropyl alcohol to help you lubricate the stud pocket as you put the stud in. And last but not least, a studdable bicycle tire. This is the 45 North tire, it holds 300 XL studs. My process that I like to follow here is, I like to first start by laying out some studs on the table. I'll dump some on here. Just dump a good handful out. And I like to go through and set them all up in a row so they're nice and easy to get to with the tool. Otherwise, you just waste a bunch of time and energy sorting them out in between stud insertion. The next thing we'll do is we'll put a little bit of isopropyl in the cap of my stud jar here. And then we'll just basically work on the tire. Tip for you here is I have this tire mounted to the wheel at about five to 10 PSI to push back, just enough that we can kind of hear that pop and get that stud all the way driven to the base without having to manipulate that underinflated tire. So I like to grab the tool with my right hand, load up one of the studs, dip it in the isopropyl, and go right at the stud pocket. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna approach this at about a 45 degree angle, push down, wiggle it around, and you'll get a little bit of a pop. Just to illustrate, this is a properly seated stud. You can see that the rubber wraps all the way to the edges of the stud base. This is a not seated stud. You can see that by the excess pocket, there's kind of a gap up at the top area here. And then a really bad example is this guy up here. You can see it's pretty much tilted and almost falling out right now. You're gonna to wanna to come back in with the tool and fully seat those studs. So let's go again and see if we can hear that pop. And there it is. Let's do one more for good measure. So it's a good idea that if you're studying your own tire, do the isopropyl trick, you'll be able to seat all of these studs 100% down in those bases. But it's also a really good idea to check any pre-studded tire that you buy off the shelf. Now that we have a couple studs in here, you can imagine me doing this many more times, but that's how to stud that tire. So you might've noticed I use isopropyl alcohol. The reason I use that is it is a really good lubricant, which dries very fast and there is no residue left behind. In a pinch, you could use just plain water. Uh, a lot of people also tell you that you could use soapy water. I don't condone soapy water for the reason that once soapy water dries, it leaves a film. When soapy water film gets wet again, it becomes soapy water, which means it's slippery and your stud can pop back out at that time. So remember, use isopropyl alcohol. In a pinch, you can use plain water. Over the course of your season, you might experience what we refer to as stud shed. This is where when riding on pavement or in getting your studs sticking to the things that they're supposed to, sometimes a stud can pop out of its pocket. This is normal and to be expected. That's why we offer small packs of replacement studs for your tires. At 45 North, we have three options of studs for you. We have a flat tipped stud, which is good for an economical or a commuter type tire. We have a concave tip stud, which is good for the all around conditions. And finally, we have the XL concave stud, which is the extreme stud for the most severe winter conditions. For more tips, tricks, and additional information, visit 45north.com.